Good day to all of you. Uh, I'm Dr. Palini Appan, obstetrician gynecologist, Chennai. Welcome to RAA online. And uh, the topic for today's discussion would be preterm delivery, preterm birth. As the caption says, you can think of staying small, improvising big. Few babies are small enough, but then how do we predict, prevent, and pursue preterm labor will be the topic of today. Preterm babies, small in weight, born not right, but keeps the obstetricians tight. But we remain updated with knowledge, power, and infrastructure to improvise something big for these needy mothers and, of course, those small babies. We would go on a case-based discussion because it would induce interest into you and that's why I put it on a case basis. A 32-year-old woman consults you for preconceptional counseling. She has a past history of two pregnancy losses, one at 14 weeks, another at 16 weeks over the last three years. Early pregnancy evaluation had shown a normal fetus in both those pregnancies and she is in good health otherwise. Her main concerns are pregnancy loss and preterm labor. So coming to previous mid trimester losses, the lady would be asking you as to whether is this woman at risk of preterm labor, can preterm labor be predicted and what are the factors that would make you suspect cervical insufficiency as a possible cause for her previous two mid trimester losses. It's always known that a kilobyte of prevention or a gigabytes of repair is a debate which goes on. I'm sure you'll all want to say a kilobyte of prevention. Fetal fibronectin is something which has been incriminated in the prevention of preterm labor. No, but screening of preterm labor and the controversy goes on. So what is its role? Fe fetal fibronectin has been advocated as a promising Predictive test, but it may have limited accuracy in predicting preterm labor within seven days. What does that mean? That means that if you want to do a fetal fibronectin, very good, you could go ahead and do it in spite of the obstacles of fetal fibronectin. It is valid only for one week. So in this one week, she's not gone into labor. That's fantastic. Over the next week, we probably need to repeat fetal fibronectin again to show whether that lady is not going to go into labor for the next seven days. So its validity is only for seven days. That's point one. Point two is that it is not very easily available in the armamentarium of the clinician's desk to be used as a prescriptive test. But then it is available only on a research methodology at the moment. And so not available in all the labs for us to just prescribe and say fetal fibronectin. The third point is that it is reasonably expensive. So cost versus benefit analysis, uh, whether should we do at all is a question. So these are the three restrictions of the fetal fibronectin.